Hey guys, good evening and welcome back again to your Run Academy Need English channel. I hope all of you are doing great, having a good time. So my dear students, you know, a lot of neat aspirants, they mostly struggle when it comes to the calculations of your physics or even chemistry. I have seen majority of the students struggling while calculating NT logs. And in this particular session, I'll be letting you know some, some tricks. Well, you cannot call them as the tricks. I can show you some techniques by means of which you can solve these NT logs and some other things in very lesser time. And it is definitely going to help you out in order to ease out the calculation process. Okay. See, NT log you use almost in your entire equilibrium chapter when it comes to chemistry. Similarly, in physics also, you would be using these NT logs, right? Many a times. Perfect. But before doing the NT log calculation, before doing the NT log calculation, these are some logarithmic numbers, logarithmic values which you have to remember. Like log of 1 to the base 10, you know it's 0. Log of 2 to the base 10, 0 0.3. Log 3 is 0 0.4. Uh, 4, 7, log 4 is 0 0.6. Log 5 is 0 0.69, right? Now you must be thinking, why have I not written log 6? Because you should be knowing, if I want to calculate log of 6, I need not to remember its value. Log of 6 means log of 2 into 3, right? Simple, log of 2 into 3. Now log of 2 into 3, log of m into n is nothing but log of m plus log of n. And log 2 is nothing but 0 0.3, log 3 is 0 0.47. The value comes out to be 0 0.77, simple, right? So this is log 6 value. Similarly, for example, for example, I have to calculate log of 8. I have not written log of 8 here. Perfect, but we can calculate it. Log of 8, you can simple write as log of 2 raised power 3, which becomes 3 log 2. Log 2 is nothing, 0 0.3, which comes out to be 0 0.9, right? As simple as that. Perfect. I believe this is clear. For example, log of 12, I need not to remember its value. Log 12. Perfect, I need not to remember it. I can split 12 into different parts like this. Let's say log of 12. Perfect. 12, I can write as. 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3. Perfect. 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3. Right. Accordingly, you can split it and get your result. So these are few logarithmic values which you need to remember. Right. And one more logarithmic value which is log 10, log 10. Uh, you know, that's one. Now, leave this logarithmic part aside. These can be solved with the help of few logarithmic properties, which I already told you log of m into n is equal to log of m plus log of n. Right. Similarly, log of m by n is equal to log of m minus log of n. Log of m raised power n is nothing but n log m. Perfect. Now, guys, how do we calculate the NT logs? Right? Look here once. Look here once properly. Let's say I have to calculate NT log of 3. NT log of 3. There is no decimal here. Perfect. So, write it directly as 10 raised power 3. NT log of 4. Write it directly as 10 raised power 4. NT log of 9. Write it directly as 10 raised power 9. NT log of 16. Write it directly as 10 raised power 16. No need to worry. Similarly, there is no decimal here. Perfect. NT log of 10 raised to power minus 15. Write it directly as 10 raised to power minus 15. NT log of minus 3. 10 raised to power minus 3. NT log of minus 7. 10 raised to power minus 7. NT log of minus 17. 10 raised to power minus 17. Right. So I did not have any decimals here. So directly, whatever NT log value you have to calculate, you can do that. NT log of minus uh, minus 13 will be 10 raised to power minus 13. NT log of 10 is equal to 10 raised to power 10. Nothing else. Okay. Point number one. Point number two, what if there are some decimals included? What if there are some decimals included? For example, you have to calculate NT log of 3.4. Now, what you have to do over here is 3.4, just split it as 3 plus 0 0.4. Just split it as 3 plus 0 0.4. Now, this 3, this 3 over here, you can write it directly as 10 raised power 3 multiplied by 0 0.4. Do you remember? 0 0.4 is basically, 0 0.4 is basically log of, uh, log of 3, right? 0 0.4 is log of 3. Perfect. So you can approximately write it 3 over here. 0 0.4 is log of 3 approximately. Perfect. So you can just write 3 into 10 raised power 3 over here will be the final answer. It is an approximate value. It's not the exact value. Perfect. It's an approximate value. Now you just have to see the options. The one which will be closer to this, that's going to be the final answer. Right. And in your neat examination, the options, they are not kept very close. For example, one of the options is kept 80. Second option will be 120, there's a gap between the options. It's not like one option will be 80, another will be 80.5, another will be 81. No, options are not kept like that. Now look here, for example, NT log of 4.6. Perfect. So break it as 
फोर प्लस जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स परफेक्ट दिस फोर राइट इट डायरेक्टली एस टेन पार फोर मल्टीप्लाइड बाय जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स इज बेसिकली लॉग ऑफ व्हाट जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स इज लॉग ऑफ फोर राइट सो दिस विल बी फोर इंटू टेन रेज पार फोर फॉर एग्जाम्पल फिफ्टीन पॉइंट थ्री यू कैन रिट नू कैन राइट इट एज फिफ्टीन प्लस जीरो पॉइंट थ्री नाउ दिस फिफ्टीन डायरेक्टली राइट एस टेन रेज पार फिफ्टीन जीरो पॉइंट थ्री इज बेसिकली लॉग ऑफ टू राइट सो टू मल्टीप्लाइड बाय टेन रेज पार फिफ्टी परफेक्ट now here is minus 3.4 till now i was not showing you the negative is here now minus 3.4 how can you split minus 3.4 just think on it minus 3.4 is nothing it can be written as minus 4 plus 0.6 correct minus 4 plus 0.6 minus 4 you can directly write as 10 raised power minus 4 0.6 0.6 is log of what it is log of 4 right so 4 into 10 raised power minus 4 perfect anti log of minus 4.7 Minus four point seven, you can write as minus five plus zero point three. Simple. This minus five you can directly write as ten raised power minus five, and this zero point three. Zero point three is basically log of two, right? So two into ten raised power minus fifteen approximately. Similarly, let's say a uh, minus sixteen point five three, right? How can I split it? It can be split it as a uh, minus seventeen plus zero point four seven. Perfect. Minus seventeen you can directly write as ten raised power minus seventeen multiplied by zero point four seven is basically log of what? 0.47 is log of log of 3, right? So 3 into 10 raised power minus 17 is going to be the final answer. Perfect. So this is how you can calculate anti-logs of different numbers, right? I believe all this is clear. These are anti-log of some normal numbers 3, 4, 9. Similarly, anti-log of negatives, where it comes to decimals, these are the decimals. How do we calculate their anti-logs, etc., etc. Now there is one more thing which a lot of students have been coming and asking me, right? How to do these sort of calculations? For example, in your chemistry, everywhere these sort of calculations will be there. My right? dear yes, students, my point is, if you are the neat aspirant, right, knowing the pattern of the neat paper, right, that the gap is between the options in the in the options in the options of every question, be it in your physics, be it in your chemistry, right, between the options there is a there is a significant gap kept. Perfect. Why is that? So that you do not have to solve them precisely. So that you can use the approximation over here. Approximation is the best way source to solve the question, guys. Right? For example, let's say this calculation is there: six point eight multiplied by three hundred divided by two point one. Now, if you want to multiply this and this, then divide this and this, it's going to take a lot of time. Right? You need not to do that. Just use the approximation here. For example, six point eight. Instead of six point eight, I'll write seven multiplied by three hundred. Instead of two point one, I'll write two. So seven threes are twenty one. So it will be twenty one hundred. Divided by two, right? Twenty one hundred divided by two. It will be approximately how much? One zero five five. So your answer is approximate two thousand. So choose that option. Choose that option which is closer to thousand, right? That's going to be the correct answer. Why do you have to waste a lot of time in order to do all this in detail precisely? Don't do that. If by chance options are very close, let's say one of the option is thousand, another another option is nine ninety five. Another option is nine ninety seven. Then you cannot go for the approximation. Then you have to solve. Then you have to solve precisely, right? But I am telling you, in ninety nine point nine percent of the cases, the options are kept right significant far apart. Perfect. For example, this calculation is there. You are not supposed to multiply ten point zero eight with six point six, then with three point one, then divide with eighteen point one. Guys, it's going to take you years, right? You are not supposed to do that. See, ten point zero eight. Just write it as ten. So six point six, right? You cannot write it as six. You cannot write it as seven. Perfect. I'll I'll keep it as six point six only. But three point one can be written as three. Perfect. Eighteen point one can be written as eighteen. Right? Can be done. Now six point six multiplied by ten is sixty six. Sixty six into three. Now it looks easy. Perfect. Three six eighteen. Three six eighteen. Nineteen nineteen. This divided by this. Right? Now the calculation has reduced. Otherwise, if you want to do Like properly with precisely, it's going to take you a lot of time. Solve it. Look at another one. Let's say it's twenty one point one five, right? Do not multiply twenty one point one five with thirty point three. Then with this, 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 etc., etc. Don't do that. Use the approximation if the options are kept significantly far apart. Say twenty one point one five. Just write it as twenty one. Thirty point three. Just write it as thirty. Ten raised power minus two. You can write as such. Divided by two hundred one. You can write it as two hundred. No need to worry. 